Hi everybody, I'm Doc Shocker, and welcome to The Binding of Isaac, Wrath of the Lamb. Or, uh, as I like to call it actually, the one game I pretty much had absolutely no plan of doing a recording of. Um, simply because there are so many just absolutely fantastic YouTubers out there currently doing YouTube series. Uh, you've got guys like Northern Lion and Biz Snap and Alpaca Patrol... Um, Twitch personalities like Cobalt Streak. I mean, these guys are phenomenal, top, top notch players. And I am a scrub. Um, that being said, this may end up being a very short video as I am just positively terrible at this game. Um, I think I've got somewhere along the lines of like 40 hours into it and I still haven't even unlocked all the characters. But uh, we're going to. Just random us up some Eve, which it's never really all that good as she's starts with a lower amount of health, but she does start with an item, and I suppose that's somehow meant to uh, counteract the fact that she's really kind of shit. But uh, if you're not aware of what the the Binding of Isaac actually is, it's it's a roguelike game where you're, you're a child named Isaac who is um, basically being sacrificed by his mother. And you escape, basically, the sacrifice by diving into the basement of the house. Ooh, I didn't realize this is an XL floor. Um, yeah, and it begins. But as you progress through the game, which all these levels are basically procedurally generated through a specific set of uh, rooms, as you can see down the corner. I'm currently playing in the cellar. The first level of the game will either be the cellar or the basement. Um, and from those specific tile sets, it kind of constructs a map for you to navigate. Uh, I'll grab this heart here. Um, a lot of people would probably draw a lot of parallels to this game to kind of the old school Zelda. Um, and they wouldn't be wrong by by any stretch. Um, collect hearts, you collect bombs, keys, all manner of goodie. There's also uh, a lot of other various effects that you can get as you progress through the game by collecting passive items, active items, um, and I am... Oh, I didn't take damage there. That was borderline amazing. And another key. Um, keys are actually really good. Typically in the, uh, the first floor of the game, you don't need a key to get into the first item room. Um, but as this is the Cellar XL, an extra large floor, it locks the item rooms for you, meaning that you need keys to get into them. And they are not kidding about the fact this is some XL action going on here. I think I'd be very, very happy to find an item room right now, as my damage is terrible. My run speed is equally so. Whew, that was very, very, very lucky. I did not... I'm honestly amazed that I did not take damage in that. That is the door leading to the first boss that we'll have to fight. As this is an XL floor, we'll have to fight two bosses before moving on into the next stage of the game. The one kind of upshot of the XL floors is you basically get credit for completing two floors for only having to navigate one larger floor. Ah. As you can see, there are also secret rooms located. Uh, Bob's Rotten Head. Um, it acts like a, a bomb that charges every few rooms. I'm not sure exactly what the count would be on that. I'm as I clearly stated, terrible at this game. It's just, you know, a fun time killer. Very casual game, I guess. 
Let's see what we have in our first room. X-ray specs. This is an awesome, awesome ability. A little caption on the bottom. I've seen everything. What these will allow you to do is, uh, I believe, see adjacent rooms and will automatically unlock um, secret rooms for you. Watch out for this fire as... The deeper red fires will shoot bullets at you. It's never fun. Let's see what our second item has in store. Ooh, the brass knuckles. Passive effect, which will allow me to fire an occasional tooth, inflicting extra damage. Tooth shot. As you see, one of the, the good visual draws of this game is, is the fact that pretty much... Uh, Every item that you happen across in the game will somehow affect how your character looks. At least that's what initially brought my interest to it. I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing. Our super secret room with troll bombs. Well, that was kind of cruddy. Um, let's see, we've got 15 cents, so we can actually go to the store, which you'll see down in the... Uh, at the bottom of the map, located at the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Um, as you progress through floors, you collect coins. Coins can be exchanged in a number of ways. Um, the first one we'll see here in a second in the form of a shop. In the shop, um, we've got the, the battery, which we will immediately take, which is not fantastic with Bob's rotten head. Um, but there are items in the game that will have longer recharges, and the battery will help alleviate that problem. Um, it's not a s standard that uh, better items have longer recharges, because some of the worst items in the game, I believe, also have fairly long recharges. But there, are some of the really good ones, it, it really works in your favor to be able to uh, recharge them in a timely fashion. And that was a terrible throw. Here we fight the the widow, which many say is one of the easier bosses in the game, and I, I guess to a degree they are right. But I'm already taking some serious bad bad hits, so we need to. <laughs> there we go, like five minutes and already dead on the first floor. But we'll replay. Figure we'll do two plays here, and depending on if I can actually do anything whatsoever on this game. It may just be going into the recycle bin on my computer. damage there. Wow, Eve is just so terrible for damage. I honestly don't know if her damage is, is any lower than, say, uh, the, the main basic first character, Isaac, but logic dictates for having to pump that many rounds into anything. It's a fairly safe bet that, uh... Yeah, we'll take that. I believe the left hand has something to do with, uh... Spawning red chests when completing rooms. Could completely be wrong. I've never really consulted the wiki or anything on this game. Although it is a fairly extensive wiki at that. Hooray, bombs! Here, Mom's Eye. It's a tears up with possibly random effects. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, that's what it is. It'll. It's the off chance it shoots behind you as well. Oh, 
well, let's just hope that we can uh, get through this fight and uh, possibly actually move on to the second floor. That would be pretty spectacular. spawning spiders. The blue hearts that I picked up are, uh, I believe they're called soul hearts. They kind of act as uh, armor, and um, non-easily replaceable health. They buy you an extra hit or two on the fly. Speaking of flies, here we go. This is a self-sacrifice room, and uh, as is that down there, walking through there would cost me a heart, and there could or could not be something worthwhile on the other side of it. Uh, let's see, I'll trade bomb for a key in the unknown. Teleport. Ooh, deal with the devil um, the deal with the devil is something that normally happens when you fulfill a certain condition in terms of uh, damage, like receiving less damage than X in a given floor, with X being, you know, a heart and a half or half a heart even. Um, but you would be exchanging permanent health for one of these items. The cat is nine lives. I would have nine lives to play through in the game, but it would cost me two hearts permanently. Um, Guppy's Paw would convert red hearts into blue hearts, which has certain benefits, many of which you will probably not pro really see. Um, I think we're just going to have to pass on the deal with the devil. I, uh, I don't really feel confident enough in my play for either of those to really be worthwhile. Um, we're later in the game and I had more heart containers... Um, Guppy's Paw would have certainly been worth it, since, uh, basically what it does is for every one spirit container that you have in your life pool, you can exchange it for three spirit hearts. Um, ooh, odd mushroom. Good, good stuff. The damage up, I believe it slows the character down, makes your head fat, but... I want to miss the monies. Pills. What do we have? Tears down. That was horrible. Bad gas. No better. Fighting a horseman of the apocalypse. This should, assuming I survive the fight, which, to be honest, my play against the horseman is rather terrible, as is all other play in this game for me. Um, what's called a cube of meat, which is a throwback to uh, one of the game developers' previous games, a, a fairly, well, a ridiculously popular indie game by the name of Super Meat Boy. Taking some such stupid damage. Good grief. That was borderline ridiculous. Now you see, now I might actually be in a position of rethinking the whole thing since I got, I think, a health up from the odd mushroom that I picked up. But I think I'm still going to pass. Excuse me. Still getting over the dreaded summer cold. Get a 
this a key. The ability to fly would be fairly spectacular at this point. I cannot believe I did not take damage right there. Good room, good room, I'll take it. That was actually, to a degree, stepping up to a level higher than my normal level of play. Not that it's, you know, it's, it's a fairly common thing that I surpass this area of the game. But naturally, you know, gotta be a dummy about it and record it, so of course I'm gonna look foolish. can't get at. The small rock, which is a damage, just a straight damage up, I believe it does compromise range possibly and slow me down some, which, uh, oh yeah, that's definitely a great ability. My little unicorn gives you an invincibility state and allows you to charge enemies um, to inflict damage on them. It's a fairly nice early game item. Nothing I think that would really carry you through to the late game too well. But against the first few bosses in the game, you can usually uh, inflict a lot of damage in a small amount of time, which is definitely the way you want to go. I mean, it's just math. The longer you kind of spend in a battle, the more prone you're going to be to take up any bit of damage. Tears down for sure. so there's nothing I can really do for that. Um, don't think it's going to be tremendously worthwhile. Yeah, we'll go check what that room is up there. I know I'm walking slow, so this is probably going to take a while. I'm not even going to be fighting anything in the interim. But if I could get a bomb, there are a couple of... Eh. Play Judgment for two cents. He might pay something out. No, yep, I didn't figure he would. that pill could have been a speed up, I'd be so much happier. And that's how it's done. Thank you, my little unicorn. HP upgrade. Another spirit heart. Really do kind of wish that uh, I'd taken Guppy's paw now. Be sitting on a nice swish 15 hit points for that. Um, probably not by this point. I would have burned everything up. Taken. Horrible, horrible. These guys might be kind of tricky since my speed is so horrible at this point. Mr. Boom. Uh, I think we're going to pass on that. 
Hmm. Really surprised that did not actually give me five bombs. I thought all of the uh, bomb items in the game actually gave you five consumable bombs. Mr. Boom would have been just basically a reusable bomb that's probably good every two or three rooms. In the grand scheme, I would almost be willing to say... Although I don't have any bombs, in the long run it would not serve me probably as well as my little unicorn will. That is not to say that My Little Unicorn is really that spectacular of a game or, uh, of a game changer, but it is good enough for our purposes. It's a nice damage buff, gives us temporary vulnerability, and is really handy against uh, a number of bosses. Super secret room. Ooh. We're going to leave that for now. That's called an Eternal Heart. Axe is a, uh, an HP up in the game, but if you uh, pick it up and then take damage after it, that is the first piece of health ultimately to go. It would act as a piece of armor for you, but... In the long run, it is definitely well more worthwhile to uh, finish the floor, go back for it, and uh, then continue on. got eight cents that technically puts uh, makes the shop viable um, as uh, the the larger actual items in the game can sometimes be half price but I'm also kind of worried that if I go in there I'd end up having to fight greed and that just wouldn't be all the fun in the world I mean it wouldn't be terrible greed is a fairly easy mini boss but uh if he could be avoided, I'd just as soon do that, then have to fight him. And I think we'll move on to our boss room. Yep. Did not do as much damage as I had hoped for. And on top of that, I'm taking really stupid damage. Luckily, my cube of meat does have some defensive properties and can uh, block bullets if, if all lines up correctly. It really was not a bad fight for fighting Peep. Not that he's the hardest boss ever, but... As I've said before, I'm kind of horrible at this game. Now we're going to head back and grab that uh, Eternal Heart. Hopefully not lose it on something stupid like that spike room there. Kind of second thinking my whole strategy of just avoiding the shop in hopes of... Uh, gathering up 15 cents to be sure that I can get something in there. As more often than not, the shop will have something for me at this point that I could use, be it uh, 
the adventure map, the compass, um, items like that. That would basically reveal the map to me, thus making things a lot easier when tracking down boss rooms, item rooms. You know, adds a little to the the meta, the strategy of the game. You know, down we go. And the depths. That is a good thing. This is, uh... Actually... One of my favored... Tile sets. But I don't... See as how I might... May not be able to get through here. I don't know. Three more bombs. Hmm. I think before I decide to tackle this puzzle any further. I think we're going to go the other way. <laughs> the enemy we're currently fighting, it's actually, uh, for just being a, a mini-boss in this level, this is actually one of the, uh, first-level bosses, Larry Jr., Again, is an, another throwback to uh, Super Meat Boy. All right. So the one for four here is probably going to make that room we left previously actually doable. Um, we are currently out of soul hearts. Never a good thing. Just the, uh, the extra armor. You know, the, the free hits we can take. It's just, you know, a nice little safety net. Alright, that's good to know. I'm very happy that the item room is over here and not on the other side of that bomb room. taking incredibly dumb hits here. Polyphemus. This item is uh, one of the better damage upgrades in the game. As you'll see in a minute, however, it is going to severely decrease my uh, shot speed. But it's a, a substantial damage upgrade, and it has an added effect that if its uh, damage overcomes an enemy's hit points, fundamentally the bullet travels on or travels through it, allowing you to hit multiple enemies for a single shot. Um, kind of a trade-off for for the fact that you have a. a considerably diminished firing rate. Uh, I don't think we need to do bomb for key right now. Have to excuse me while I hydrate a little bit. Now, at this point, I should probably be exploring the floor to try to search out a source of health. And, uh, certainly not be effing around in this room. Um, just because it's going to take forever. I mean, luckily I took that little bit of damage that is going to allow me to, uh, or allow my pet bird to do some damage over time to these really annoying enemies. But I think we will stay in the floor and I'm going to uh, see if I can't wrangle up two more cents in order to go to the shop. I'm sure by now, well, there it is. 
I'm sure by this point I'm probably going to have to fight greed. Um, it should be no good unless I can find an arcade, a slot machine, something like that. No? Ah, excellent. We will take the ladder. It allows us to span uh, single gap. Um, yeah, ravines, as you can see. Very handy item. In the long run, definitely pays for itself. Um, I've got six bombs, so we'll try and see if we can't find a secret room. And there's greed. As long as we get through that unscathed, I think I can go back to the shop and I'll be able to pick up the... Uh, the red heart that's in there. It's a shame I have to do that, but I'm not sure how comfortable I feel like going into this fight without having as much health as I can possibly gain for myself. <coughs> oh, this cold has just been murder on me. I'll tell you, 100 degree weather, or 100 degree heat index, coupled with, uh, just nasty, all over cold is just does not mix well together. Ah, you dodgy son of a gun! Unlocked an item. Splendid. Found the stem cells. Good for another health up. Alright. Anything else I want to do on this floor? Nope. I think we're going to continue on. Honestly, this is kind of turning into a moderately decent run. Um, feeling good about the amount of hit points I have, but if I could couple that with not taking such horrendous damage, um, I think I'd be feeling a lot better about the whole situation. I took two and a half hearts of damage, or a heart and a half of damage there for a lousy bomb. the uh, fortune teller a little bit. Normally a good source of uh, tarot cards. As you can see, the tower... I don't even remember what the tower does. Ah, that's what the tower does. Kill me. <laughs> oh, that was just so absolutely terrible. Anyway, um, this has been The Binding of Isaac, Wrath of the Lamb. Um, if you like the video, well, be sure to hit that little like button down below the video. Um, you can always share it with your friends, leave comments, questions, critiques, let me know how I'm doing. Um, this is probably going to be the only video I ever do of The Binding of Isaac unless I get really pro over the months to come. Because I, I tend to while away on this game a little bit. Um, you can find me on, uh, or you'll have every all the information for finding me on Facebook and Twitter down below the video. And, uh... I guess we can leave it with that. So I've been Doc Shocker. You've been great. Happy gaming. <laughs>